Hello and welcome to Larissa's Kitchen. You guessed it, we're making more sourdough. Today we're making focaccia, so we'll be using active sourdough starter. For those of you not familiar with focaccia, it's a flat bread that's perfect for sandwiches. If you've been following along in our sourdough odyssey, you're going to start to recognize all the same ingredients. For the focaccia, we'll need starter, salt, all-purpose flour, olive oil, honey, wheat gluten, and water. Of course, the ingredients are always listed right here, as well as the full recipe and instructions in the description box below. Like all these other sourdough recipes, we're going to start with everything in the mixing bowl minus the flour. Whisk that up, then add the flour in and knead. Both these starters were made in the same kitchen the same way. Although the crazy bitch has a much sweeter aroma, so we're not going to be using that for the pokasha. Instead, we'll be using Hoochie Mama starter. We're starting with our cup and a half of starter. I'm just adding my three ounces of olive oil on top of the water. That way it'll pour out cleanly. If you're not convinced that your starter is strong enough to rise a loaf of bread, you can add yeast. I'm sure this is strong enough, but I'm just adding the yeast in anyway. I know a full tablespoon of salt sounds like a lot, but you need it. We'll also be adding in two tablespoons of honey. Our water and oil. And we're gonna whisk this together first. And then for our focaccia, we're adding in a full quarter cup of the wheat gluten. And I'm starting with four cups of all-purpose flour. This needs to form into a dough ball also. It should not be quite as soft as the sourdough. And I do fluff these cups before I scoop them. So my cups turn out to be about 140 grams. Okay, let's mix this up first. Okay, this looks like it is not going to need any additional flour. We're just going to mix this on low until it forms a nice elastic ball.
Okay, if you're ever in doubt about how much flour to put in, for these very long rising doughs, it's much better to have less flour than too much. You can always knead in more if it is too sticky. I'm scooping this dough into a very liberally greased large mixing bowl. This is gonna sit out on the countertop and rise twice, and then it's going in the refrigerator in its pans overnight. All right, and we're gonna turn this to coat on both sides. Okay, then this just gets covered with a damp towel. Especially in my house, this just helps keep off any hair or dust. Okay, this has risen nicely. We're just gonna turn this down. And then turn it over. Cover it. And let it rise again. This has only been rising for an additional hour or so. It rises very quickly on the second rise. So now we're getting ready to put this in our pans. So normally we would put the focaccia into one sheet pan, but you can also put it into two 9 by 13 inch baking sheets. If you don't have baking sheets, just use 9 by 13 inch cake pans. We need to grease these with just a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to divide this dough in half without punching it down too much. So, I think that's about right. Okay. And then these are just going in this pan. And we're going to stretch this out until it just about fills the pan. And then we're gonna have to let this rest for about 10 minutes because it's just gonna keep retracting. Okay, that's probably all the better I'm gonna get it on this first stretch. Okay, so we just cover this again and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Okay, these have rested for 10 minutes. We're just gonna turn them over nice and soft. and stretch them to fill the pans. Then these are getting covered and going in the refrigerator overnight. Lucky for us, we don't have to wait that long. This is a loaf of focaccia I made last night and put in the refrigerator. It's now been sitting out for about an hour and a half. I have my oven preheating to 425 degrees and it's gonna preheat for another 30 minutes. If your kitchen is very cold, allow that oven to preheat for 45. We'll be topping our focaccia with olive oil and flake sea salt. To make our traditional dimpled shape in the focaccia, we just use our fingertips and we're going to press down. Now we don't want to deflate this too much, but we do need to get all the way to the bottom. Then we're going to top it with olive oil. Now we don't want to put on too much, but we do want to make sure that we have enough that it can settle in those little dimples. And now our flaked sea salt. Once that 30 minutes is up, this is going in for 18 minutes. Now it did take me four times to get the exact time right, so 18 minutes may not be right for you. The original recipe says 15 to 20. 
15 was way too light and 20 was just overdone. We want this to be nicely golden brown. I have a skillet in there to add just a little bit of mass to the oven. That way it helps recover when we close the door. Once this reaches a manageable temperature, I'm just gonna get this out of the pan onto a cooling rack. It's time to give our focaccia a taste, and I've turned mine into a pork loin sandwich. If you'd like to see how I made that, the link to that video is at the end of this one. Let's give this a taste. It's awfully big. Oh yeah, so good. Mmm. So good. This bread is perfect. Thank you for visiting Larissa's Kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, give the like button a click and don't forget to leave a comment. We're always happy to hear from you. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and don't keep us a secret. Share our videos with your friends and family. You can follow us on Facebook for behind the scenes pics and videos and on Twitter for upcoming videos and the random cat picture.